to say that. Let's look at point number two, amen. And the next way you get yourself in position for a call of God is not only you serving him where you are currently, hallelujah, uh, as unto the Lord, but, but also to fast, to fast, all right? Now, I have to continually give you this qualifier because any call we receive from God is all by the grace of God because none of us deserve a calling. None of us do, all right? I'm just telling you how to get in position, all right? All right? None of us deserve it. You're not earning the call by fasting. But you're just getting in position like the song say, we here for you. You see? We here for you. All right? Fast. If you look at verse 2, amen, look what the Bible says. And they, that's Paul and Barnabas and the rest of them, they ministered to the Lord. They served the Lord. That got them in position to be called. But guess what else they did? And fasted. And that's when the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. We'll cover that next time. But, but look what they did. They fasted. Pastor, what's a fast? You say, Pastor, don't, don't say that. We know what a fast is. Listen, you don't know who all is in church this morning. We got people here for the first time. We got babies in here. The same way when you first came and you didn't know certain things, they got people in here that don't know, know certain things. I just can't give a word for the adults. I got to give word for the babies as well. It's, I got to break down milk and meat. Amen. So let me give some milk. A fast is when you abstain from food for a spiritual purpose. And that's just a little short definition. When you abstain from food for a spiritual purpose. Now, back in the day when we was in false religion, we called everything a fast. We fast from TV, from the phone, from the radio. That's not a fast. A fast is when you abstain from food. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's when it really counts. But it's also when you abstain from food for, for what? A spiritual purpose. Because some of y'all abstain from food, but that's called a diet. You understand what I'm saying? And that's not a fast. You just won't lose weight. You won't look good. That's not a fast. From a biblical standpoint, it might be from a medical standpoint. From a physiological standpoint, but from a biblical standpoint, it was the reason why we hear, amen, a biblical fast is when you abstain from food for a spiritual reason. You want something from God. You want something from God. You want something from God. All right? All right? Some people here saying, Lord, Pastor, why are you talking about fasting this morning? I get hungry when you mention the word. You see? Yeah, the flesh don't like the fast. And guess who else? Satan don't like the word fast. Anybody hear me up in here? Guess who else? The world don't like the, world, the, the word fast. We burning them up today. Somebody say fast. Ooh, the devil got nervous. You see? Now, there's all kinds of fast, y'all. You have the Daniel fast where you do fruits and vegetables. You stay away from meats. You have, amen, the partial fast where you, you abstain from food, but you allow yourself the liberty to have water and some people shakes, anything that's liquid, amen. And some people, amen, they'll even put a gumbo in the blender and drink it, amen. I, I'm fast. I'm not saying what I heard, y'all. I'm just, listen, listen. Amen. Take that leg quarter out that blender. Fast as long as I don't chew, it's good. Listen. So you got the Daniel fast, you have the partial fast, then you have the absolute fast, which when you, is when you go no food, no water, all right? Um, I would not recommend the absolute fast longer than three days, all right? Because the body needs water, you know what I'm saying? You can't go longer than 72 hours without a miracle. I'm going to qualify that, without a miracle, amen? You can't go more than 72 hours without water. Amen. And if you fast, absolute fast, more than three days, you're going to get what you want from the Lord. Because <laughs> to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm telling you right now. So you don't do that unless the Lord leads you to do that. Amen. There's been some extreme circumstances of people who've gone absolute without anything for longer than three days. 
But they was in his presence. They was in the mountain with God. You know, they come back glowing. You know, I'm talking about Moses. You see what I'm saying? Tell you get where Moses was. Three days. All right? Besides that, the time of the fast is all on your individual uh, uh, decision. You see? It's all on your individual decision. Now, all of God's people are supposed to fast periodically. You see? We get that from Matthew 6. And in Matthew 6, amen, Jesus has gone through the disciplines of the church, and he's actually given us the keys to blessing in Matthew 6. Anytime you want to be blessed by God, these are the three things that you keep in your spiritual walk, and blessings are going to flow from it. He talked about when you give. He talked about when you pray in that chapter. And he also talked about when you fast. Anybody hearing me up in here? You see, in a car, you need three things to keep that car running good. You need gas, you need oil, and you need water. And your spiritual walk consistently throughout the year, you got to make sure that these three things are present as well. It's got to be some prayer when you pray. Got to be some giving when you give. And it's got to be when you fast. Just be some fasting. Amen. And so he tells them, amen, in this chapter 6, 16, moreover, when you fast. Not if, when you fast. He talked to his disciples. He says, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to fast. And one of the first problems we get when we begin to fast, we want to tell everybody we fast. We want to tell everybody we fast. We call mom on the phone, mom, I'm fasting today. Nobody asks you that. Nobody asks you that. Nobody asks you that. Jesus said, you want to appear to men to fast. And some of y'all, y'all too spiritual to tell people because you know you're supposed to keep it secret. So you appear to fast. You walk around the job like this. <laughs> and people don't know what's wrong with you. They give you Tum, Pepto-Bismol. They're giving you laxatives. They're giving you all kinds of stuff because they don't know what's wrong with you. And you just wait for them to say, what's wrong? <laughs> you know, I'm fasting. I've been on a fast for two hours. And it's just... <laughs> so you don't disfigure your face. You don't tell anybody, amen. You go about your day like you was eating, all right? Because you want to keep it secret, all right? Because he tell us, he said, if you act like that, you're acting like the hypocrites. And then he said, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. That means that your spiritual purpose for fasting you will not get. Because what you really wanted was the praise of men. You wanted people to see, you wanted people to think highly of you and think that you're spiritual, amen. So God said, all right, I'm not giving you what you really want, which is that child being saved, that husband that you want, that, you know, because we have big reasons why we fast, and we don't want to ever waste a fast. Anybody hear me? Don't waste your fast to let somebody know you're fasting so they could applaud you. That's not, that's, don't waste a fast. Food important to me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not wasting a fast. So people can applaud me. Amen. So Jesus said they have their reward. You're not getting nothing from me because you got the praise of men. Verse 17 to the believers. But thou, when thou fastest, what did he say? Anoint thine head and wash thy face and put deodorant on and brush your teeth and <laughs> mouthwash. Amen. You want to you wanna, you wanna look good when you fast. You want to come out there, amen, your face glow and anoint yourself. You know, perfume, smell good. Amen. Some people that mean, some people say that, that mean put some, some all sheen in your hair, grease your hair. Amen. And if that's the definition of it, then we know the, the, the makeup of the people because we don't let people put all in our hair. But listen, anoint your head with all, he said. You see? He said, anoint your head with all. He said in 18, that thou appear not unto men to fast. But unto thy father, which is in secret. The only person who should know you're fasting is God. All right? All right? Now, I have a caveat here. All right? Now, if you're married, amen, you should let your spouse know as well. In the Corinthians, it talk about y'all coming together on one accord during the fast. Y'all supposed, y'all won, actually, in the sight of the Lord. And so you tell your spouse, so when I began to fast, me and First Lady, we talk about it. And we talk about it, why? Because I want to see if she want to coordinate with me, if she want to fast together with me, 
Because where two agree touching anything, it shall be done. So I increase the power of my fast when I bring my spouse on with me. If, if one of us was fasting uh, and I decided, well, I'm not going to fast with you, amen, at least I know what's going on in our life. And I'm not going to tempt her coming around in the room with an okra gumbo. You know what I'm saying? Babe, look what they brought me. You know, so I'm going to know how to roll. Y'all know what I'm saying. All right. So your spouse, yeah, you want to tell your spouse. You want to talk about that with your spouse. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're talking about fasting. Somebody say fasting. All right. And I just have in my spirit, amen, when you fast, your children, you ain't got to tell them. They're going to know. Because you're going to be ag. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you're going to be, sit down. I'm sitting down. Well, stand up then. <laughs> At least that's what I heard. <laughs> All right. He says that if you do it in secret, watch this, 18, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret. What happens if you keep it secret between you and God and, and your spouse? What should he, look what he says. And thy father which seed in secret shall what? Reward thee openly. Come on, give God some glory for that, huh? <laughs> you see, they might not know when you fast, but they will be able to look at your life and tell that you are fasting. They ain't going to know specifically when you fast, but as they look at your life and the blessing... And we're going to get into the anointing, the calling upon your life, amen. They're going to know, amen, by the, the, the move of God in your life. I hadn't seen them fast. I don't know when they're fasting, but I know they're fasting because he's rewarding them openly. Come on, give God some glory, amen. All right. So remember the original premise we're talking about. Paul and Barnabas, they get this awesome calling. And I told you that they put themselves in that position to get that calling because they serve God, but also because they fasted. Jettison Franklin, amen, a pastor in America, amen, wrote a book about fasting. And he got this saying that I love as, as I was reading it. He says, every assignment has a birthplace. Every assignment has a birthplace. Remember I told you God got assignments up there. He got a clipboard full of assignments. Some things that he need to do in the earth. Just like, amen, during David's day, the assignment was slay Goliath, be king of Israel. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, unify the kingdom, amen. God has assignments in this time we live in, it, all right? But every assignment of God has a birthplace, has a birthplace, has a place that you have to get to, a place you got to be at, Amen. A position you got to be, hallelujah, uh, at, hallelujah, for you to get this thing. Every assignment has a birthplace. And you see, it's been my experience, and biblically speaking, theologically speaking, fasting has been the birthplace of many of the assignments of God. What you mean by that, Pastor? So many people get those assignments that's on God's clipboard by abstaining from food for a season. You see, even Jetson Franklin, he said he went on a three-day fast and he received the call to ministry, to pastor. And he pastored one of the largest churches in America. He received the call to pastor while he was on that three-day fast. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. All right. All right. Well, well, who else, pastor? Show me, show me a, 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 a show me a, a, oh God, what I'm looking for, a, a pattern. Show me a pattern. Amen. Acts 9, 8. What about Paul? What about Paul? Paul got his calling when he was on a fast too. In 9, 8. And Saul arose from the earth when the Lord knocked him off his horse. And when his eyes were open, he saw no man. He was blinded. Remember that? But they led him by the hand and brought him where? To Damascus. In verse 9. And he was in Damascus, y'all. He was there three days without sight. That's true. But guess what else he was doing? Neither did he eat nor drink. He was fasting. He was fasting. He was fasting. And Ananias come in, heal him. He get saved. Hey, hallelujah. He get filled with the Holy Ghost. He get baptized. Amen. And the next time we see him is verse 20, after the fast. And straight away, he preached Christ 
in the synagogue that he is the son of God. Come on, give God some glory, amen. It was after he ran into Jesus, after the fast, amen. Then the calling came and he began to preach, amen. But not only that, watch this. Luke 4, 1 and 2, even Yahshua Jesus received his call to ministry after a fast. After a fast. That's how powerful a fast is for you getting in position. Even the Son of God fasted to get in position for his ministry to begin. For his ministry to begin. What calling are you waiting on? What, what, where you want God to have you? And we got all kind of callings here. They got callings to pastor, callings to be an evangelist, callings to be a business owner, business leader, callings to be a ministry head. There's different callings. There's different assignments in the earth, y'all. But I'm telling you that the fast puts you in position for the calling. Ooh, thank you, Miss Leola. I appreciate that. Amen. Watch this. Luke 4 and 1. Watch Jesus. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan. And was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days, what he was doing? Tempted of the devil. But look what he did. In those days, he did eat nothing, y'all. 40 days fasting. All right? Now, once again, if you do a 40-day fast, you better be led by the Lord. That's all I got to tell you. Moving on. I'm just, I'm, that's all I'm saying. All right? All right? But watch this. And when they were ended, Luke says, he afterward hungered. We know that, Luke. Yeah, he was hungry. All right? But look at verse 14, after the fast. His ministry starts. And Jesus returned after the fast, after the wilderness trial, he returned in the what? In the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a what? A fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. Somebody saying, I want to do something special for God. I, I, I want to I get in position to get a call on my life. Amen. Hallelujah. The answer I have for you today, amen, is get into the birthplace of spiritual assignments. And for many spiritual assignments, that birthplace is fasting. It was for Jesus. It was for Paul. Hallelujah. It, it, it was, amen, for, for Jettison uh, Franklin. Amen. And, and I want to tell you, amen, even in my life, fasting has played a significant role, amen, in who I am today. Amen. I told you that people have come up to First Lady. They don't come up to me and ask him, but they come up to First Lady. And they ask First Lady, they say, why him? Why him? Why did God choose him? to pastor a great church like Philadelphia. Why him? You see? You know how many people been pastoring in this city? You know how many years longer than me they've been pastoring? You know, amen, how more qualified, amen, through, through whether, amen, their daddy was a pastor or, or they served in ministry longer than me, amen. So, so, so they ask the question, why him? Why, wherever they feet tread, they get the buildings they want, they get the land they want, they get... They get why, why, why him? Why, why do they do it? That's what they're asking, TP. That's what they're asking. You see? And the answer to that question is not only that I served the Lord when nobody was looking for his glory, not for money, not for fame. It, it wasn't about none of that. But not only that, I fasted regularly. I fasted regularly for the Lord. Are you hearing me up in here? See, this message ain't for everybody, no. It's just for those who are hungry to do something special for God. So, so I'm not here to make everybody excited, no, because some people don't want to do anything for God. You're happy where you're at. But for those in here, I don't know how many we have, but I, I know that there's some listening. You want to do something bigger than yourself right now. You want to do something. You want to go down, amen, and, and, and spend it all for Christ. You, you, you don't want to just live a, a pointless life where nobody remember your name for serving the Lord. You want to do something, amen. Hey, God. You want to be known in heaven. You want to be known in hell. You want to do something for God, man. You see? And fasting will put you in a position to get you where you want to be. You see? In our life, amen, me and First Lady, you know, we got saved, amen, like, like, hallelujah, you was what, babe, 18, 19, amen, 
and, and you know, I'm so much older than her. I was 30 at that time, you know. <laughs> I like to play around with it, man. I'm three years old in first lady, so we're 19. I was 21, 22, amen. And, uh, and I don't know where I first learned this discipline of fasting, but, amen, we began to fast, amen. And when I started, amen, uh, the one I would fast like, like, like a day, you know what I'm saying? I'd fast from like 6 to 6, you know, and uh, we'd eat that evening, amen, first lady would fast with me sometimes or whatever, and I'd just do a day, amen, uh, usually a day a week. And then uh, moved up to like two days a week, you know, from six to six, just fasting. And every time you fast, we're going to get into it, but, but God sees you when you fast. God sees you. Amen. It's like God got a, fast, a fasting meter in heaven. And he just, he just amen, it, it begins to go up. Ooh, somebody fasting over here. Somebody fasting. He, he sees you. He, he hears you. We'll get into it in a second. Amen. Uh, I'm going to just prophetically... When we pray while we fasting, amen, uh, 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 one commentator say it's like taking our prayers and shouting them through a megaphone. God hears us on high clearer when we fast. There's certain things that we get from God during a fast that we would never get anywhere, anywhere else. The Bible says that some don't go out but through prayer or by prayer and fasting. Certain things can't happen until you put a fast on it. Oh, God have mercy. Come on, look at your neighbor say, put a fast on it. You see? And so, so we began to fast, amen, early in, in, our, in our early 20s and, 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 and her even in, in her teens. And, and so we look at our kids now and our kids fast, amen, and they, they just, you know, 10 to 13, amen. And, and I want to tell you that fasting builds up, amen, uh, a, a spiritual arsenal for you. It builds up, amen, a uh, spiritual uh, uh, treasure chest. Amen. It's often said, amen, that when your kids leave your house that they should have a treasure chest of spiritual, a spiritual inheritance. Amen. Fasting builds you a spiritual treasure chest. And you might not get your reward that day, that week, that month, but later on down the road, maybe years later, amen, and you operate in a way that nobody else operates, they're going to look at you and they're going to say, well, how is that happening? A spiritual treasure chest. You make an investment early. Oh, I, I, am I talking too spiritual? It's like a spiritual bank account, a spiritual investment. You're building up your portfolio, and you do that while you're young. You're fasting, you're praying, you're serving, and you're building up your portfolio. You're building up that spiritual bank account. You're building up, amen, that spiritual infrastructure. So that when you get older in the Lord, as the years pass, you have a platform to stand on. But it's a platform of years of fasting, years of praying, years of serving. So it's hard for the devil to knock you down because you, ain't, you don't have a, a today blessing. You don't have a today walk. You have years of spiritual investment that's behind you. So when the enemy come in like a flood, the Lord is able to lift up a standard. This ain't happened last night. This ain't happened last night. You see what I'm saying? So you look at people, you, you well, I've been around them, ain't nothing special. You, you, you don't know the spiritual investment. And that's why people that's new to the faith, they see you and they want to be where you're at. Listen, you ain't invested the time. You ain't fasted enough. You see what I'm saying? It's an insult, amen, to the years of sowing. You understand what I'm saying? You can't get that just walking up and just, just jumping up. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, no. The devil will eat you alive. The devil will eat you alive. So we make a spiritual investment. We sow right now to reap the harvest, the spiritual harvest, to come in the future. So we fast now. We pray now. Because we know that a day going to come five years down the road where God going to call us and we equip we ready, baby. We ready. When Paul and Barnabas went on that trip, they were ready. Prayed up, fasted up, served up. The devil couldn't throw anything at them that they wasn't ready for. We'll see in a second. They coming up there uh, uh, possessed by the devil. Paul looking at them. And that spiritual investment 
You know what I'm saying? Call that devil right out of him. You see what I'm saying? So, so the fast puts you in position. It puts you in position. You see? You got to be fasting. And so when we started, man, hey amen, we, we, was, we was really fasting. You know? Back in 98, man, we in 19, now that's 21 years ago, man. You see? And we've been doing it ever since yet. Yeah, that's, that's 21 years, man, of spiritual investment. 21 is a good number. I'm trying to tell you. Listen, 21, 22 years. Listen to me now. Now, I told you we started twice a week, but, but God will bump you up. And I say this not to brag, but I want to show you the progression because I don't want you to start too fast too soon. So we started one. We started two. I'm saying, I'm saying. And then we have some time where we say we read it. Now, we just going to do a whole week. You know what I'm saying? Now, we were, it was not absolute. Oh, no, we drinking everything. We drinking water, orange juice, not everything. But y'all know what I'm saying? Don't be drunk on no fast. We drinking water, you know what I'm saying? We, we, listen, we juicing everything. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So, so we getting it in. All right, so it's a week. And, and those that remember us from Bible study, who was with us in Bible study, what we would do, amen, we'd do a potluck once a week. We'd get all the people from our little Bible study. We was in the church back then. We'd get all our people from the little Bible study to cook. And they would come bring their best dishes, and we would eat. In Tyrone, they would watch me and my wife eat, boy, we, we got, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but that's because we had fasted seven days, and we uh, allowed ourselves that one day to break that, what, what, that, we was coming off our fast, and we just wanted to make sure we had all good stuff for people to cook. <laughs> so, boy, we beat, and they'd be like, boy, them people greedy. No, we had just, we hadn't eaten in seven days. You understand what I'm saying? Pretty, I'm lying? Man. So after the seven days, Amen. God put on my spirit. He said, you ready for 21? I said, 21? 21? I remember that card game they used to play with the king. And the, uh, 21? What, 21 what? You mean the basketball game where I shoot some free throws? 21? 21 days. You know? And that's going to tell y'all. She probably, gonna, you know, Grace going to tell y'all for sure. So we say, all right, we're going to go 21 days with our food. And like I said, we were drinking everything. Stopping the smoothie king, get a smoothie. You know? Oh, yeah. So 21 days. No food. You know? And, that's the, and we did that. We did that for like about three years. We'd have once a year, we'd do a 21, three years. First lady come to me, she'd tell me, she'd say, that's doing good for us. We're building us, us. Us up spiritually, we we making a try to for us. But what about the church? That's what she told me. She said, "What about the church?" I said, "Babe, I don't like to put what I do on people. I don't ever want to pressure them to do anything that they don't want to do." She said, "You ain't got to pressure them." You understand what I'm saying? She was right that time, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> They're not always right for us. She was right that time. So if y'all remember, we started in January. Every January, and that was probably about three or four years ago. Every January, we would come to church. We'd say, listen, we're going on a 21-day fast. That was birthed out of me and First Lady fast. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and she, would, she, would, she would tell us, and, and, and she, she told me, she said, just give them the option to do whatever they want in that 21. And so that's what we did. And some would go to a full 21. Some would do a Daniel. Amen. And y'all know during that time, amen, during that time, I was doing, you know, without any food, but my collar, my neck be skinny, skinny. Anybody remember skinny, skinny? Some of y'all be worried about me up in there. Don't worry. I have meat that you know not about. Woo! My meat is to do the will of my Lord. Listen to me now. Somebody say fasting. All right? So them 21, 21 days, man, that, that's... That's five, six years we've been doing this. And, and, you, and you're building yourself a spiritual treasure. I don't know who, who in their teens right now I'm talking to. I don't know who in their 20s I'm talking to. See, right now, you're so young, you could do something right now. 
that's going to bless you in an unbelievable way by the time you get like me, hallelujah, in, 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 in your late 20s. I'm just joking. By the time you get in your 40s. You understand what I'm saying? By the time you get in your 40s and you done invested, amen, man, all these years fasting for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God, God going to show up for you. You see? Fasting puts you in a position to receive a call. You say, but pastor, I'm not in my teens. I'm not in my 20s. Still fast. Amen. You see? You see what I'm saying? Because you don't know how much longer God has for you. Hallelujah. You can fast now. You say, pastor, I'm in, I'm in my 40s now. Guess what? Moses got to his 80s. Amen. So you can fast now, make that investment now, and serve God. And your latter end will be greater than your beginning. That's all we want. You understand what I'm saying? And listen, I got a, I got a confession to make. I fasted more, amen, when I was in that early stage. That early stage. I did it. I did. And I don't feel bad about it because I knew, I knew that he was preparing me. He was preparing me for this moment, for this time. You know what I'm saying? You see? And I believe that calling came out of not just being in position, but always buffeting my body before the Lord. So we want to ask the question, why does fasting put you in position? Why does it mean so much to God when we fast? Andrew Murray, the apostle of prayer, says this. He says, fasting helps us to express something to God, to express, to confirm our resolution, that we ready, that we serious. And we show that we ready and we serious because when we fast, we showing that we're going to sacrifice anything for God. That we're going to sacrifice even ourselves. We're going to put ourselves through pain, the pain of hunger. Why? So that we can attain what we're seeking to do for him, for the kingdom of God. We telling God, God, I'm so serious, I'm not eating, Lord. I'm not eating. I want you out. I, I want I want you to be glorified. I want to be used by you. You see? I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. You see when you do that, you show God that you're serious. You know, back in the day, amen. Hallelujah. Uh uh even uh in in history, Mahatma Gandhi, amen. He out there in India. He want rights and freedom for the people of India under the British oppression. Mahatma Gandhi would, would go on a hunger strike. He would, he, would, he would refrain himself from eating food. In the prisons when stuff not right, in the jail, the boys go on a what? They go on a hunger strike. What they're telling the authorities is, is that I'm so serious about change. Oh, y'all ain't feeling me up in here. I'm so serious about change, I can't eat anything until I'm heard. You see, I think that God waiting for some of y'all to get that serious about what you want from him, about the new chapter in your life, about the change that you're asking for. God looking at you saying, you're not serious. You're not serious. Because you're listening to this word, which is a key to bring you to the next level, and you ain't excited like you're supposed to be because I'm telling you, I'm giving you the game right here. Oh, God have mercy. What can I do for a lady? You see what I'm saying? Somebody say fast. fast. You see? So it's a serious thing, and that's why God will view it. Next thing is fasting gives you equipment. It gives you equipment. What I mean by that is when you come out of a fast, you will always have something that you didn't have when you went in. <laughs> oh my God, Migo, you hearing me up in here? Every, listen, every one of them 21 day fast that we went on, we came out with something that was so monumental, something that was so life-shattering, life-changing, something that takes you to a whole nother level, a whole nother place, a new anointing, a fresh outpouring. I'm talking about, listen to me, you always get new equipment when you fast. 
You know what we're studying on Tuesday is God is a what? He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. You will not seek him through the fast and not get rewarded. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. Every fast, you're going to come out different. All right? To see this, we see it in Joel 2.28. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass afterward. All right? Well, no, 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 no. Let me, let me go. Go to 2.15. Go to 2.15. Because we got to find out what the afterward is for. In 15, he told them, blow the trumpet. That's the shofar. Blow the shofar in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. God's telling through speaking through Joel. He's saying, tell my people to fast. Tell my people to fast. Blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet because it's fasting time. Tell my people to fast. And whenever God tells his people to fast, it means he's about to come through. He's ready to break loose. He's ready to break through. He's ready to give a miracle, a blessing. He's ready to take it to the next level. He never calls his people to fast when he's not ready to move. He's ready to move when he tells you to fast. Oh, God have mercy. Which begs the question, God, why is pastor telling me to fast this morning? Why is pastor talking about me fasting this morning? Because God is ready to move in your life. That's why he's telling you about a fast. God is ready to break something out in your life. But some don't go out but by prayer and fast. He's ready. He's ready. But he got to get you ready. He got to get you ready. And the fast gets you ready. It puts us in position because it's serious and God see our sincerity, but fasting also equips us. You see, after 15, after they blow the trumpet and sanctify the fast, look at 228. And it shall come to pass afterward. After what? After the fast. That I will pour out what? My spirit upon all flesh. You see, after a fast comes a spiritual outpouring. A Holy Ghost outpouring. In fact, during the fast, you're going to be more in tune with God, keener to the things of God. Your spiritual gifts going to operate on another level while you're fasting. Amen. While you're fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God have mercy. God have mercy. Pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. You see, after the fast comes a greater level of anointing. After the fast comes a fresh oil. Comes a new calling, a new purpose. Amen? But it's after the fast. You know what insanity is, huh? Doing the same thing and expecting different results. See, right now, you want something from God, but you're just doing the same thing. And you're expecting a different result, but you ain't done anything different. You're putting the same numbers in the equation, but you're expecting a different product. Well, 2 plus 2 equals 4, but you're expecting 5. I'm here to tell you that if you want a different product from God, you got to put something new, something fresh, something different in the equation. And that's when God going to give you something different. At the end, I'm trying to tell you up in here. Put a fast on it. You see? Put a fast on it. Look what he says. He says, after the fast comes prophecy, dreams, vision. All those things are what leaders are made out of. Leaders have vision. Leaders have dreams. Leaders hear from God and speak on behalf of God. That verse right here is saying, after the fast, oh, God lifts you up, calls you up, equips you for leadership. You got vision now. Now you can lead God's people. Without a vision, the people perish. You got dreams now. Hey, now you're Joseph. Now you're Martin Luther King. I have a dream. I see some things that other people can't see. Now, nah, hallelujah, I'm like Abraham. I, I see, hallelujah, what God is trying to say in the earth. Amen. You got dreams. Now you got the ability to prophesy. You see? But it happens after the fast. Fasting has been the birthplace 
of many spiritual assignments. I think it's about time for you to get yourself a new assignment. Right. Woo! It's about that time. It's about that time. You see? In my life, I got tired of being where I was. You begin to say to God, there's got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You say to yourself, I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. You see? You got to put a fast on it. You see? Carlos, if you can come on down, amen, we, we about ready to bring it to a close. You see? Now, before you can be called to ministry, to something big in business for the Lord, before you can be called to, amen, deacon, amen, or any of the things that God is doing in the earth, you got to answer the call of salvation first. And salvation is, is easy. Is as easy as ABC. He calls us and he says, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon me, learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly, and you shall find rest for your souls. That's the first call we answer. Jesus is inviting us in. That's the first call. Before that call, listen, nothing else will work out. Nothing else will do. You answer that call first, then you can get on the rest of the plan. Pastor, how do I answer the call? You admit that you're a sinner. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You believe in Yahshua Jesus, his cross. His death, his burial, his resurrection. And you open your mouth and you call upon him, confessing him as Lord and Savior, knowing that he's going to return to judge the earth in righteousness. And the Bible says when you call upon him that way, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And after that salvation, then you start building up your spiritual portfolio. You began to serve him and pray and fast. You began to prepare your luggage for the journey. Amen. And in this church, I'm begging God. I'm begging God for young men. I'm begging God for young women. That will begin to put together a spiritual portfolio. Amen. To be able to come aside, me and First Lady, amen, and do some great things in the earth. They calling for us, y'all. Bigger cities, bigger states, they calling for us. But my place is here. I'm not able to go. My place is here. And so like the Lord, I have the question, whom shall we send, Lord? Who will go for us? And I'm praying as we go through 13 that God will equip you. He will give you things to get you ready. Ready to be a pastor, a prophet, an evangelist, ready to be a first lady, ready, 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 ready. It's assignment time. Listen, I've taken up too much of your time. Ushers, open up the altar. If you're here and you would say, Pastor, I don't even know if I'm saved, but you went through that gospel and I'm ready to accept the plan of salvation. 
in a moment you're going to come and get saved. There are some youngsters, teens and 20s. And there's a call of God on your life. I wish that you could see me and First Lady in our 20s. I wish that we could go back and, and be in our 20s in fellowship with that younger generation that's here. Because y'all not doing it yet. Y'all not doing it yet. See, y'all looking at us thinking that you got to be older to serve the Lord. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you wait till then, you're not going to get the good assignments. You got to get on this thing now. You got to get on it now, man. You got to work on it now. Get busy. 19, 20, 30 something. Get busy. To our millennials in here, the generation that they've given up on, the generation, amen, that they say is worse than all the generations before us. I got a word for you. Where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. And from our millennials, if you start, if you get with this thing right now, hey God, blessing will spring from the very last place on earth the world thought could spring from. God will take you from last and make you first. Take you from worst and make you the best. But you got to start now. Don't wait for everybody else to do it. Carlos, I'm almost done, but the prophetic is here. I got to keep on going. What happens is in a church is cycles. Churches start off young and energetic like Philadelphia. 20s and 30s wanting to serve the Lord. We come in that way. And we serving them. And we serving them with, with the people our age and we serving them. But something happens that the generation behind us, the 20s and the 19s behind that, they watch us serve. But they're not as on fire to serve themselves. Churches die because of that generation gap. Listen, get on fire for the Lord. Get on fire for the Lord. Get on fire for the Lord. Start teaching, start preaching, start reaching, start worshiping, start singing. Listen, we will use you. We're going to put you up there. I ain't got no problem with nobody's age. You can be a teenager up here, but you just got to show yourself. Show yourself, show yourself approved. I ain't putting no fool up here, but if you show yourself approved, we can only be strong if every generation is active. Hill, come on, Hill. Come on, Mrs. Dwight. Come on, Pete. Come on, Brother Sam. There's gen one generation. Malvo, come on. TP, come on my side. Another generation. TP. Y'all talk about who old and y'all get in position. <laughs> How old are you, Malvo? Who, who in their 20s? Come. Another generation. Who in their teens? Who in their teens? Come, another generation. Hey! Come. Come! Stand. 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 This. This is what a strength looks like. This is what a church looks like. When the generations come together, 
and serve the Lord. They not waiting for us. And we not waiting for them. Everybody serving him. No matter how old we are, no matter how young we are, we love him. And we serious about him. That's when a church can last and touch, amen, a city, a state, and a nation. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him. Come on, give God some glory. Come on, give God some glory. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all turn around and face the altar for me. Amen. The altar is open. Come to this altar. Come to this altar. Come to this altar. For salvation, for calling. I don't care if you six. Come to this altar. Come up, little Omar. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Go by my mind. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We got to do this thing for him. We got to do this thing for him. We got to do this thing for him. He has assignments. <laughs> he has assignments. And I wish I could call every man up here, every woman up here. But my space was limited and my time was even more limited. We got assignments. And can I tell you to stop looking at yourself? Stop looking at yourself. Stop looking at your past, your qualifications. It's not about you. Stop looking at yourself. Stop looking at whether you could talk in front of people. Whether you, Stop looking at yourself it's not you that's going to do it anyway God's going to do it through you he's going to do it through you you just got to be tired you just got to be tired tired of the status quo there's got to be more got to be more it's got to be more I want more got to be more God have mercy God have mercy God have mercy Oh, God, look at y'all. Got me running late. We got to pray, y'all. We got to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say with me, I want more. Say with me, I'm ready for a new assignment. Woo! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Say, I'm ready for a new assignment. <laughs> Give me a big assignment. <laughs> I'm ready to be used by you. Give me a big assignment. Woo! <laughs> I don't want to die. Without my assignment, oh, God have mercy. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, God Almighty, I know that I'm not perfect, <laughs> but I thank you that you use, that you call. And that you save sinners like me. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you were buried in the grave. And I believe on the third day, you rose. Now, Lord, save me. Fill me. Equip me. And use me. I want more. I want more. More anointing, more power, more purpose. I want more. I want more. Now 
Now give them a shout of praise. Hey! Gotta be more. Gotta be. Gotta be. Gotta be. Hallelujah. Gotta be. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll talk for you, God. I'll walk for you, God. I'll work for you, God. I'll pray for you. I'll, I'll fast for you. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Hey. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. I got to get y'all out of here. I got to get y'all out of here. Spiritual. Spiritual treasure chest. Spiritual treasure chest. Spiritual treasure chest. Get to work on it. Get to work on it. They ain't going to know where the power come from, but you going to know. Get to work on it. Get to work on it. Hallelujah. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Woo! In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Woo! May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you. Bless you with shalom. Help, peace, prosperity in Jesus name amen amen love y'all love y'all be blessed Yeah.